Hello everyone, today we're going to design a brand new YouTube banner for my channel and I'm going to be using Photopia.com. If you're unfamiliar with Photopia.com, it's basically like a free open source version of Photoshop. I, I honestly don't know how this is legal because they copy a lot of Photoshop's basic tools, but we're going to be using it so that I can create a brand new banner that better reflects the direction that I want to take my channel in. So from here, um, I clicked on new project in Photopia and I selected the social option at the top and I selected YouTube cover, which already sets in the correct number of pixels for my projects. And I'm selecting one of their templates because it already has text and it already has layers for placing the images and placing the other content that I want to add to my YouTube banner. You can start with a brand new project from scratch. I just decided to save some time and use one of their templates to start off with. I'm using the type tool so that I can go and change the type layer that's already existed in the template to Creative Pursuits, which is the name that I want to give my YouTube channel. And so I want to place it front and center in the banner itself. And here I'm going to the font selection in the options bar so that I can select a more interesting, more fun font. And you'll notice that I'm dragging my mouse over where it says size in the options bar so that I can go and make the title a little bit bigger and I'm placing it at the center. I wanted to use an image of paint dripping and I'm using pexels.com so that I can source an image for free um, that is copyright free so there won't be any need for me to pay for it or cite it. So I found this cool image on pexels.com and I'm selecting free download so that I can download it to my computer and then open it up on Photopia. To open up the image, you just go to File and Open and select your file. I'm going to save some time here by using a series of shortcuts so that I can copy the image and paste it to my existing file using Control A to select the image of the paint dripping, Control C to copy the selection, and Control V to paste it into my template like you can see here. I'm going and using edit and free transform so that I can resize the image and move it around a little bit. When I'm happy with its placement I can press enter on my keyboard or click on the check mark at the top in the options bar. Here I'm selecting the image file and I made a mistake here in trying to create a clipping mask. I didn't move the image file on top of the type layer. So I'm selecting the image file again, moving it to the top of the type layer, right clicking and selecting clipping mask. And what this does is place the image inside of the text as you can see here. I made the background layer that initially came with the template invisible and now I'm actually deleting it so that now I just have an invisible background but I don't intend for it to be invisible for long because I'm using the gradient tool so that I can add a cute gradient in the background. Initially I selected a two color gradient but now I'm going and double clicking on the gradient stops in my gradient editor and I'm basically dragging my mouse over the image of the paint drips so that I can sample some of the colors. So I can sample the pink and the yellow in the image as well as that little light purple. So now the gradient colors have been edited and now I'm just kind of playing around with the direction of the gradient. I'm playing around with different ways to drag my mouse to create the gradient so that I can have a gradual blend of colors that is appealing to me for my banner.
Now that I'm happy with the backgrounds and the gradient, I want to add some effects to my text. I want to make the words Creative Pursuits stand out, so I'm going to be using my layer styles. There's a few different ways to use the layer styles or to actually open up the panel for layer styles. But one of the easiest ones is to click on the text layer and then EFF at the bottom of the layers panel. It would be FX if you were working in Photoshop, but in Photopia it's EFF. And here I'm just selecting stroke so that I can go and add a very thin outline around my letters. Whenever you want to use a stroke, you want to be light handed. You don't want to add a really heavy stroke because it's going to look a little bit cartoony. Having added a stroke, I'm not going to play around with the drop shadow so I can give it a three dimensional effect. I want it to look a little bit three dimensional like it's popping out of the document. So here I'm just going and editing the opacity of the drop shadow and the direction of the drop shadow. I selected 90 degrees so that it would look as if it's casting a shadow right beneath the letters. And I'm playing around with the opacity so it's not necessarily so dark and it blends a little bit more nicely with the light colors of the background. But you can play around with the size and the distance of your drop shadow depending on how dramatic you want that to look. Moving on, I want to work with my next type layer. So I have the main title, Creative Pursuits. And now I want to work with the next type layer. I'm making sure I use my selection tool, which basically looks like an arrow. So I can select the next type layer that was already included in the template. And I'm changing the wording so that it says with Elizabeth Abaya. And having done so, having edited the text, I'm now going to go into the options bar again and play around with different fonts and a different size so that it creates two levels of typographic hierarchy. With the typographic hierarchy, you basically want to make your main title bigger and bolder and more attention getting to create emphasis. And whatever is less important, so in this case it would be the subheading with Lizabaya, you want to make a little bit smaller, a little bit less attention getting. It doesn't mean that it's going to be invisible, it just means that it shouldn't be as bold and as colorful. So I'm playing around with those different options, playing around with the font, playing around with the direction of the text and the, um, the size and the color so that I can make it a little bit less attention grabbing than my main title. Eventually I changed my mind and select a different font, but it's all good. Here I just want to go and make the subtitle stand out a little bit further, so I'm adding a little rectangle of color right beneath it in the layers panel. And I'm matching the color by sampling again the pink from the initial dripping paint image. So that the rectangle of color as you can see is a light pink and it contrasts with the purple at the top in the gradient. but it still matches the same colors being used in the image. And here I'm just going and placing the text in different areas at the left then fleshing it to the right and just playing around a little bit with its placement so that it looks a little bit more aesthetically pleasing to me. At this point, I decided that the title was looking a little bit dark, so I went back to the effects by just double clicking on EFF right there in the layers panel for the Creative Pursuits layer. And I decided to give the stroke a lighter pale yellow color, again sampling from the image and making the stroke just a little bit more noticeable so that it would be easier for viewers to to see it, to see the title, especially since I clipped the image in it, so it was kind of like a busy title. Then I decided to make the subheading with Elizabeth Abaya a little bit darker, so I was sampling from the image again so I could match that same dark purple used in the image. 
and I added a very subtle, super subtle drop shadow to the subheading because again, I don't want it to distract from the main heading there. I don't want it to take away from Creative Pursuits, but I also want it to have a little bit more oomph. So here I am playing with the opacity and playing around with the distance of the drop shadow so that it would be just a little bit more special, but it wouldn't be a really attention-getting drop shadow. Next, I decided that the background was looking a little bit blank, so I went back to Pexels.com and I downloaded an image of bubbles so that I could create a really cool background texture. To move the image over, I'm using the series of shortcuts I used before, Control A to select the image, Control C to copy it, and Control V so I can paste the image into my template layer. So with the bubbles layer selected, I'm going into my blend modes here where it says overlay at the top and I'm playing around with the different options that I can have to blend the image with the actual gradient beneath it. And I think screen is the best blend mode for my goals. I'm just using the opacity slider so I can lower the opacity of the image, make it a little bit more transparent so that it blends a little bit more nicely with the gradient itself. And I think the way that I blended it is pretty cool. It doesn't take away from the title and it's still a little nice texture. So here I'm basically ready to export my final draft. I go to File, Export As, and I'm selecting PNG. And when I get the panel to select the options, I'm just going to go and name it Banner. And I'm not playing around with the format. I'm not playing around with the dimensions. I'm just going to click Save and call it a day. And that, my friends, is how I designed my new banner. Thank you so much for watching and for your support. Make sure you like and subscribe. Have an awesome day.